Hi guys, I hope you're keeping well. Um, this is just going to be a nice short video on fractions, decimals and um, percentages. So um, I'm just going to quickly go through each of them. Um, I know that I've done percentages with you this year and um, you know it was a hard it was a hard part of the of the maths curriculum. Um, we start to get a good grasp for it at the end, but um, but no, I do understand that um, it is it is hard to get your head around, and um, we'll plow into it, and hopefully, and um, this will make things a little bit clearer. So I'm going to start off with fractions. All right, um, the big thing is don't get overwhelmed by it. Um, if it's not coming to you, um, it will come. All right, um, but if it's not coming to you straight away. Don't worry about it. Just give it a break for a while and then come back to it and um, and maybe try um, try a few questions again or um, try some problems that your parents might give you at home or something that we've done already in the book. All right. So um, first of all, I'm just going to break down fractions. What they what exactly they are. So um, the easiest way that I can think of breaking down fractions um, is if we had a pizza. All right, so if you had a pizza and you divide it into, um, we would say six slices, and we would say that you ate one slice of it. So there was six slices all together, so it was divided into six parts. So that goes in the bottom. But how many parts did you eat? You had one part. So you had one part out of the six parts of the pizza. So you had one sixth of the pizza. All right. Um, if we will take this pizza and there was only two people at home to eat it. So you decided that you would eat your half. So there was two parts to the pizza. So we'll put two in the bottom. Um, how many parts did you eat? You had one part of the two. So you had one over two, you had one half of the pizza. Okay. Um, then if you were at a, if you were at a birthday party and um, somebody and they sliced the cake, so there was a good few people at the party, so we'll divide this into 10. So we've, yeah, we've 10 slices there, um, but only seven of the slices were actually eaten. Here, I'll get a different color marker here, just to make it a little bit clearer. Um, So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, there were, oops, that's clear, is it? That color isn't great. Um, yeah, I'll just go over it in the blue. So there were 10 slices all together. So we keep it divided into 10 slices. So the 10 goes in the bottom. How many were eaten? There were seven tenths eaten. So there were seven out of the 10 slices eaten. So that's how we get our seven tenths. So that's how we get a number, a number other than one over a fraction, all right? So there was seven tenths of it eaten. Um, and this works for any number. So if there was, if we had, um, so there's 36 people, or there's 36 children in our classroom. Two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 
it's crazy to imagine when you look at that that there's 36 of us okay but anyway um 36 people in the class and we want to find out what fraction of the class um like to eat sweet corn okay so we found out that um 18 of the class like to eat sweet corn so so it was 36 altogether so that goes in the bottom the bottom is always how much there was all together so how many parts it was okay so if for example 36 people liked the sweet corn we would have 36 over 36 and that would be everybody and that's why we say um, a number that is the same over a number is equal to one or is equal to a whole number so it's it's equal to the whole class but anyway we said here that 18 like the sweet corn so we 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have 18 out of 36 like the sweet corn. Now is there any number that will go into both of these numbers? Um, actually 18 will go into both of them. So 18 goes into 18 once and 18 goes into 36 twice. So one half of the class likes um like sweet corn all right i hope that makes sense so um yeah so this is where the basis of fractions comes from all right so it's a certain amount of something so whether it be a pizza a whole pizza a whole cake a whole class um it could be the everybody in the county of Galway so we could have um so we only have 36 here from the whole class but um um I don't know how many is in Galway but I will say say there was 500,000 people in Galway and I know this number might sound a bit crazy but the 500,000 goes in the bottom because it's a whole lot of Galway and say 250,000 people in Galway um enjoy the G enjoy ga so 250,000 so 250,000 can go into that so half the people in gold will like the ga okay and now i hope that doesn't confuse you if you if it does um just revert back to this and think back to this um but i was just showing you how bigger numbers work um so then I'm just going to pause it for a second and I'll talk about adding fractions together and multiplying fractions together. All right, because that seems to be where we're just having a little bit of a problem with our mental maths is the adding and the um, multiplying of fractions. All right, okay. Okay, so we're just going to talk about adding fractions first. So when we're adding fractions, it's important that we get the numbers on the bottom the same these are called the denominators and what we want to find is a common denominator so a number that all of the bottom numbers will go into all right um i'm just working with two numbers here for the minute but um i could do this with three numbers now in a couple of minutes as well so 24 and 12 we know that both of these numbers um can go into 24 because 24 we're going to 24 once, 24 or 12 we're going to 24 twice. So we want to change these so that they're over 24. All right, so five over 24, that's 24 over 24 already. So I don't need to change it, but the 12 isn't. So to make the 12 over the 24, I'll have to multiply the 12 here by two. So 24, so if I multiply the bottom by two, I have to multiply the top by 2 so the 7 multiply by 2 and then we can add them up now when you're adding the 24 stays the same at the bottom okay um so that stays the 24 and 5 plus 4 is 19. so when we're adding you need to find the common denominator or find the number that both uh, that all the numbers in the bottom will go into and 
you need to get all the numbers in the bottom the same so that you can add them up. You can't add them up otherwise. So you have to make sure that you get the numbers in the bottom the same. Because otherwise you cannot do it. All right? Okay? Um, now I'm going to change this. I'm going to have three numbers. Um, three fractions. So I will have uh, one-sixth plus... Um, Five twelfths plus um, uh, seventeen over uh, forty-eight. Okay. So um, now I want to find is the light okay there? Uh, this is seventeen. I hope you can. If you can't see it, that's seventeen over forty-eight. There, all right. Um, so we want to find a number now that all of these will go into. And all of the time with 5th and 6th class now, the numbers will all go in evenly, most of the time actually. And sometimes you may have to multiply all of the numbers to find a common denominator. But um, most of the time it will be a number that will be relatively easy to get. So all of these numbers will go into um, 48. So... Um, we need to get all the numbers over 48, all right? So to get this, um, so we know our 17 over 48 will not change, okay? This one sixth then, so six goes into 48 eight times, okay? So I multiply the bottom here by eight, six multiplied by eight to get the 48, so that means I have to multiply the 1 on top by 8. So I have 8 over 48 here. Alright. Then here I get my 12 over the 48 as well. And how I will do that is I have to multiply by 4. 12 multiplied by 4 is 48. So then I have to multiply the 5. So that's 20. So then I will probably end up with an improper fraction here. Maybe. I'm not certain yet. Um... So the 48 just stays in the bottom, but they all have to be 48, so our answer is also over 48. And then the top, 20 plus 17 is 37, plus 8 is 45, actually no. So it would be 45 over 48 is our answer. All right. Um, hope that clears things up. Um, I will just do a minus now as well. Um, and I will do a minus, uh, so just for example, um, 7 over 8 minus 3 over 8. So this is the same as the addition in the fact that the 8 just stays in the bottom. You don't have to take anything away or do anything with that. It says the same the whole way across. The 7 minus 3 then, which is 4 over 8. Can I simplify that? Is there a number that will go into both? So 4 will go into 4 once. And 4 will go into 8 twice. So we have, um, this is equal to a half. All right. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the common denominator again, or the number that will go into, um, so that if we have different fractions, so if we have, um, like our addition there, we had three different numbers in the bottom, three different denominators. So um, I will go uh, three quarters minus um, uh, seven over 16, okay? So now we have to get these over the same number to be able to, to minus or add any time. But for here, we have to get it over the same or all, all over the one number. So here I need to get the um, everything over the 16. So to get three quarters over 16, um, four, I had to multiply, to get the four into a 16, I had to multiply by four. Then the three on top, I have to multiply by four also. So I have 12 over 16 minus seven over 16. That's equal to, 5 over 16, the 16 stars in the bottom all the way. Alright, 
Um, I hope that's okay. Um, I'm going to add on, or I'm going to move on to um, multiplying and actually, no, I'll leave that now for another day. I just want you to try and focus on this now, all right? So if we can find, or if we can think in our head, what exactly is a fraction? What? Um, where does it come from? So we think of the whole, um, whether it be the whole pizza, um, so being divided into four, and us eating, so there are four parts out of the whole pizza, so it's divided into four, so I've had one part of it, okay? So I've had one part out of four, so I've had one quarter. Um, then we think about our adding and subtracting. We keep the numbers the same at the bottom. And um, then just think how we can change our, change our fractions because of a common denominator. So if we're given um, two different fractions, so a four and a 16 at the bottom, or whatever the case may be, um, that we're able to change them into a common denominator so that um, we can add them or subtract them. All right, um, I will do a multiplication and division next week, even though this is, that is more um, sixth class. I know we do a little bit of in fifth class, but um, if we can get our head on this first, um, okay. Um, I will do a little bit on decimals now, and then I will do some percentages, and that will be it. If there's any more questions, just pop me an email, and um, I'm happy to do another one, all right. Okay, so. Okay, so now we're just talk, going to talk a little bit about decimals. So with decimals, you have obviously a decimal point. You might have a number before it. You may not have a number before it. It might be zero. Could be a number. Um, but after the decimal point, so you have your tens, or tenths, your hundredths, and your thousandths. And it goes on. You have your ten thousands, your hundred thousands, and so on. But I'm just going to work with these three for now. And this relates back to our... Um, litres and millilitres that we're doing this week as well so um, they go hand in hand so hopefully working with the litres and millilitres you might get a little bit more of a grasp for this as well um, so first of all if we have a fraction we need to to change it into a decimal you have to get it over 10 100 1000 you have to get it over um, you have to get it over any number, like from 1, from 10, 100,000, and so on, so that we can change it into a decimal, all right? Um, so, for example, most of us know that 0 0.5 is a half, but we may not know why it's a half, all right? So, I'll show you here. I just want to get a different bio or a different marker here. There yeah. So we have our 0 0.5, but why is it a half? Um, so I'm just going to go down here now and I'm going to get my half. So I need to get this half. I'm just sure about that 0 0.5 in case it confuses for a second. So I need to get that half over 10 or 100 or 1000. The lowest of them numbers that you can get it over, the better because it's easier to manage, all right? So I know that this will. So I know that this will be able to go over 10 because 2 multiplied by 5 will give me 10. So I need to get that over 10. So I multiply the 2 by 5, that gave me the 10. So then I have to multiply the 1 by 5, and that will give me the 5. So then we know that if something is over 10, 0 point, there's only one zero here. So there's only one number here behind the behind the decimal point okay um i'm going to change now so if i got one twentieth okay we need to get this over 100 or sorry we need to get this over 10 or 100 or a thousand but i'm not going to go back the way so i need to go forward so so i need to go up as far as 100 so 20 will go up to 100 and to get 20 to 100, I multiply by 5. To get 1, 2, um, so I multiply the 20 by 5. I have to multiply the 1 by 5. So that's 5 over 100. Now, 
There are two there are two zeros in the bottom here. So there has to be two numbers behind the decimal point in our answer. So it can't be 0 0.5, because I need two I need two numbers. So it's 0 0.05. Okay. Alright, I hope that makes sense now. Um if it doesn't, just just re-look over it again there and just see every time you have your fraction over 10 because there's one zero it goes one decimal place if you have it over 100 there are two zeros two decimal places if you had the number seven over thousand you would need three decimal places so it will be 0 0.007 you have your three decimal places now. All right. Um, do, do, do. I will just change one or two fractions now into decimals. We did this a little bit with the liters and milliliters as well. But um, I'm just going to pick a couple here just to change into a decimal. Every time you're changing into a decimal, just always remember you need to get it over 10, 100, 1000, um, or one of them, all right? So I know that 50, I can change that into 100 by multiplying it by 2. So I've multiplied that by 2. I have to multiply 37 by 2, uh, 74. Okay, two zeros here. So we need our two zeros here. Okay, all right, um, what else now? I will do 17 over 25. Okay, and now I need to get this over 100, or I could need to get, I need to get it over 10, 100, 1000, but I know that 25 will go into 100. There's no point in me trying to put 25 into 10 because I would have to divide, so I need to multiply it by something to get up to 100 or 1000, but 100 is closest, so... Um, 100 in the bottom, and then because I multiply that by 4 to get to 100, I have to multiply this by 4, so 4 7s is 28, 4 1s is 4, and 2 is 6, 68. Okay, so again, two zeros here, so two numbers after our decimal point. All right. Um, now, I hope that's fairly clear. Um, I'll do just an addition, a subtraction, and um, I will do a multiplication as well, maybe, all right, okay. So 1.382 plus 4.696. Okay, so this is a nice straightforward one. Um, I'll do a little bit more complicated one in a minute. So 2 plus 6 is 8. 9 plus 8 is 17. Um, 6 and 1 is 7. 3 is 10. 4 and 1 is 5 and 1 is 6. 6.078. All right, is my answer. Um, okay, I will have, if I was given a sum like this, 6.7 plus 3.04 plus 9.147. Okay, so like our liters and milliliters, um, I'm a fan of having everything in line with each other. So whatever the most amount of numbers are here behind a decimal point, I would have that amount of numbers behind them all. So I have three here. So 6.7. And then I know there's three decimal points under other ones. So I just make sure that they all have three. So you can add on zeros at the end. They don't matter at the end. If you put them in, in anywhere here in the middle, they'll make the number change. But if you put numbers on at the end behind the decimal point, it makes no, it doesn't make any difference, okay? 
then our 3.04, we'll put a zero just to keep them in line. And then here we have our 9.147, okay? Then we can add them up together. Now they're all nicely in line with each other, all right? I'd even say to have a line for your decimal point, okay? To make sure that you make sure that everything stays in order, that you don't let something slide either way, all right? So zero plus zero plus seven, four and four is eight, and then seven is eight, nine and three is 12 and six is 18, okay? So that would be our answer here, okay? Um, I will do a subtraction now, but being honest, our subtraction is the same. See, the thing that throws off some people is the decimal point. But if you, if you just keep your decimal points in line all the time, and then it'll end up there in your answer as well when we're doing addition and subtraction, all right? So um, our subtraction, uh, we'll do 14.283. Minus three point nine nine nine. Okay, just to make it a little bit harder on ourselves. Okay, so three minus nine you cannot do. Take one from here. Thirteen minus nine is four. Seven minus nine you cannot do. So you have seventeen minus nine is eight. One minus nine you cannot do. Eleven minus nine is two. Decimal point all in line. 3 minus 3 is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1. All right, so I hope that's okay for our addition and subtraction. Um, if there's any other questions on that, let me know, and um, I'll put them in another video if, if I need to. Um, multiplication then. Now, multiplication, um, I've seen... I've seen a lot of mistakes where people are trying to carry the decimal point through, but I'm just going to give a little tip here. And trust me, it is the, it is the, it is as easy to do, to multiply decimals as it is to multiply any number. But um, it's just people get carried away with the decimal point sometimes. So, um, 3.32.86. Uh, multiply by 4. All right. <coughs> so, what you do when you're doing a multiplication sum, well, what I do, and it's not what every book says, but what I do is I forget about the decimal point until I have my answer at the very end, and then I go back to my question. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So, 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. 8 multiplied by... Uh, 4 is 32, plus 2 is 34, 4 multiplied by 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11, 4 multiplied by 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Now, in our question, we had two numbers after the decimal point here, and we had none here. So we only had two numbers after the decimal point altogether, so then in our answer you have to have two numbers after the decimal point. All right. So our answer is on 131.44. Now, um, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky or where people can get cut out. And um, this is where you need, or this is where I was going to say where you need to listen a little bit more, but this is where you need to forget about your decimal points until you get to the very end. So um, 14.44. Nine eight multiply by um, one point four. Okay, so forget about the decimal points. Even though I've written them in there, you just forget about them until the end. All right. So four multiplied by eight is thirty two. Uh, four multiplied by thir nine is thirty six. Plus three is thirty nine. 4 multiplied by 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. 4 multiplied by 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Okay. Down your 0. 1 multiplied by 8 is 8. 1 multiplied by 9 is 9. 1 multiplied by 4 is 4. 1 multiplied by 1 is 1. Add all the numbers up then. So you have 2 
9 and 8 is 17. 9 and 9 is 18, and 1 is 19. 4 and 1 is 5, plus 5 is 10. And 1 plus 1 is 2. Now here, we had two numbers behind the decimal here, but we also have another number here. So we have three numbers behind the decimal here. So what you do is, you have your three numbers here when you add them all up, so then you put your decimal point here, you have three numbers here behind the decimal point. And that's how you, <coughs> that's how you do it, all right? Uh, that's how I do it, that's how I find is the easiest. Forget about them until the end. This is only when you're multiplying now, all right? Um, Dividing is pretty much the same, but I'm not going to go into it now. I will do dividing fractions and dividing decimals in a later video, but I don't want to complicate you. All right, um, because I'm aware now that I have to do percentages as well, and um, I'm going to I'm going to quickly run through percentages, and um, if there's any questions after that, then we can we'll work on them. All right. Okay, so for percentages, with percentages, it's always important to, if you're working with fractions, you have to get it over 100. And with decimals, um, we, we have to, we use the two numbers after a decimal point for our, um, for our fraction and whatever else then is behind the decimal point, and I'll explain that later, all right? So we will work with um, fractions first. So what percent means, percent equals out of 100, okay? So every time we think of percent, we should be thinking of 100, okay? As a fraction, you have to have it over 100. As a decimal, or when you're getting it to a decimal, you're pretty much looking at the two numbers that are after a decimal point, okay? So, um, I will just tear back to one half again. So one half, we, most of us know that that's equal to 0 0.5, but um, what we want to do is, we actually want to change these fractions to get them over 100, all right? So, to get 2 over 100, we multiply 2 by 50 to get to 100. So, we multiply the 1 by 50. We have 50 over 100. That's equal to 50%. All right. Um, if we talked about a quarter, so we need to get that over 100. And this is for any number, any fraction that you have, you need to get it over 100 to turn it into a percent, all right? So to get that over 100, we multiplied four by 25. So then we have to multiply the one by 25. So we get 25%, okay? Um, if you had three over 10, and you want to turn that into a, a percentage. And the bottom, you multiply the 10 by 10 to get to 100. So now you have to multiply the 3 by 10. So you get 30. Okay. Um, and I'll do one more of these then. And um, we get uh, 21 over 25, okay, so is equal to, now we need to put, change that 25 to 100, so we multiply it by 4, so the 21 multiplied by 100, so it gets 84, is equal to 84%, okay. Um, I hope that's okay. So whatever you're, whatever number you're getting, you have to get it over 100. And in fifth and sixth class, you won't be asked to any obscure numbers like you would be in secondary school, like something over um, 87 or um, 
9 over 94 is is equal to what as a percentage all right most of them will divide into 100 evenly so um so that's why i'm keeping a base here and try um try these out in your copy all right um i'm going to write up i'm going to do one more and then i'm going to write up two that you that you might try in your copy then after this okay so um 11 over 20 is equal to so i need to get it over 100 uh, 20 multiplied by 5 give me 100 so 11 55 equal to 55 percent okay now um these are two for you to try in your copy 7 over 25 and 3 over 5 so i want you to try them two in your copy see if you can change them into a percent Remember now, percent equals out of 100, so it has to be over 100. Try them two in your copy and um, see how you get on with them, all right? Um, I'm just going to talk about decimals now. Um, go into percent. And then I'll do one more thing with percent, and then I'll leave you that, because I do understand now that I'm throwing lots of content at you here at the moment. Um, so any decimal you would be saying is um so if i was given a decimal 0 0.49 okay that is equal to 49 percent if i was given a decimal 0 0.4938 the two numbers after your after your decimal point that is your percentage anything after that goes behind the decimal point when you're talking about percent now i know that might sound a bit confusing because we're talking about our decimal point but if you just write your equal sign and then just keep using this strategy instead of overthinking the decimal points so the two numbers after sorry the two numbers after your decimal point that's your percentage so 49 and then i have this 38 left over 38 percent all right um same if i had um 0 0.182 equal to 18.2 percent okay um i hope that's okay um to get a fraction to get a fraction into a decimal um we have to change it into over 10 or over 100 like we we're doing um for milliliters and liters which say we had uh, 13 over 20 we need to say we wanted to change this to a decimal first so we need to change that to over 100. We need to change that to over 10, 100, 1000, as we talked about already. So to get it over 100, 20, to get to 100, we multiply by 5. Here we have to multiply by 5. 5, 1, 0, 5, 1, 6. So 65 over 100. That is equal to, as a decimal, 0 0.65, or is equal to 65 yeah hope that makes sense um what else do i want to do oh yeah um one last thing that i wanted to do so if you were given a percentage and you were at, or sorry if you were given a figure or a number of people or um something so say you were given um there were 500 people um, were in the airport and 17% um, of them um, were go were flying to England, just for example. So you want to get, you want to get 17% of 500. 
So the way you would have to do that is you would have to change that 17% into a fraction, okay? And we did this now not long before we um, we finished up. So we to make any percent into a fraction, we put it over 100, okay? Can it be simplified? This one can't be simplified because 17 is a prime number anyway, so nothing can go into it. Only 17 and itself, okay? Um, or, so, so we need to get 17 over 100 or 17 hundredths of 500. So remember our, remember our, what we were sort of chanting in the classroom. So you divide by the bottom, multiply by the top. So 500 divided by 100 is equal to 5. So we divide it by the bottom. Now we multiply that by the top equal to uh, 35. 85. So 85 is 17% of 500. Okay, so divide, So first of all you make it into a fraction and then you change it into a, um, or then you divide by the bottom and multiply by the top. And sometimes it's easier to leave it over 100 because um, it's easy enough to divide by 100 because the the um, the decimal just comes two places to the left, all right? Um, I'll do one more here and then I'm going to leave one with you to do at home. All right, so we're going to find 30% um, of 35. Um, uh, of 660 okay so first of all what we have to do is we need to change this into a fraction so anything that has percent it's over 100 because percent means out of 100 so 30 over 100 of 660 now we can make this a little bit simpler we can there's a zero on the top and zero on the bottom. So that means that we're making it a little bit simpler. Uh, we didn't have to do that, but it's probably a little bit easier. Now, remember, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top. And keep saying that in your head, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top. So 660 divided by 10. So divide by the bottom is equal to 66. Then you take that 66, you divide it by the bottom, now you have to multiply by the top. So equal to 3, 6 is our 18. 18, 19. So 198 is 30% of 660. Okay. Um, I hope that clears things up a little bit. I know you've listen to so much of me there now in the last while but um hopefully it will be beneficial and um, it makes things a little bit clearer for you um so i'm going to give you i'm actually going to give two here to do in your copy and if this means now that you <coughs> that you find that um you're doing lots of work here um then talk to mom or dad or whoever uh, does the work with you and say Right, listen, I'm doing, I, I'm working on this, so you can cut back somewhere else um, if you want to do less of your starlight or um, whatever else you're doing this week, um, because this is your priority now, all right? Uh, so first one I want you to do is I want you to find 7% um, of... Um, 7% of 600 and 20% of uh, 200 and 260. Okay, so there are the two that I'm going to leave for you to do.
Okay, so you can do them in your copy and um, and we'll see how you get on with them, all right? Um, now, thanks a million for listening. I know this video went on way longer than I thought anyway and probably way longer than you're expecting as well. But, um, but try and tease them out. If you need to go back and listen to something 20 times, 30 times, whatever it is, until... Um, until you sort of get a grasp for it, do that, all right? And um, and uh, don't be afraid to give me an email either. Um, I'm only delighted to help, and um, you know, I'm here to help you at the end of the day and um, get the sixth class ready for first year and the same with the fifth class, getting ready for sixth class because um, unfortunately we won't be back in the classroom, it looks like. And um, yeah, so I hope that clears things up. Um, thanks a million for listening and I'll see you again soon. All right. Cheers, guys. See you later.